overflows. Why Life, Love and Light differs from other books. This book, Life, Love and Light, is unique in many ways. The book is the first in the Tantra series. The style of communion is Tantra way. This is the first book of the Tantra series. The book is like the river that is now emerging from its origin in the mountains. So too, life, love and light is now emerging from the deepest core of the being. A new journey of communion is now making its way along the plain of planes of life and living. These three books have a fixed device or a structure, therefore differs from her other books. Every book starts with Nivedita asking and Tao answering. No argument was there, no wastage of words or energy. These are simply statements of facts, telegraphic messages with no view to convince or just to relate. If you encounter the awakened one with a question but your mind is closed, he will not answer you in this way. Even if he answers, the message will not reach you. For the process of transformation to set in motion, first your closeness has to be broken. Inroads are to be made in that. Then he will have to be aggressive. Then your prejudices, your preoccupations, preconceptions have to be destroyed. Unless you are cleared completely of your past, nothing can be given to you. But this was not so with Nivedita when she approached Tao. With her there was no past, just the present moment. Not much work was needed. Her journey began many lives ago and even in this life the journey continued since birth. If the communion is past oriented, there is bound to be so much hankering after sex. The real hankering is after oneness, not sex. Sex can be used as a medium within certain moments of life. Since this oneness is of this moment, this is not sexual. In sex, two bodies have only a deceptive feeling of becoming one. They are not really one. They are only joined together for certain reason with no positive results. But for a single moment, two bodies forget themselves in each other and a certain physical oneness is felt. This hankering is not bad, but to stop it is dangerous. This cannot be the end. This hankering shows a deeper urge to feel and attain oneness. In love on a higher plane, the inner one moves, merges into the other. And then there is a feeling of oneness. Duality dissolves. One is non-dual only in such non-dual love 
we can have the glimpse of what is the state of beyondness. We may say that this is the state of Bhairav, the beyondness is absolute love with no coming back, with no coming back from the peak of love, there is no falling back, it is remaining on the peak. In love alone a holy pilgrimage happens, but not for all because almost no one moves beyond sex. So we go on living in the valley, the dark valley. Sometimes someone moves to the peak of love, but then he falls back because it is so dizzy. Love is the highest peak of consciousness and no one can really stay in, stay at such an altitude of love altitude of love forever. One starts feeling dizzy, it is so high and you are so low and it is so difficult, therefore it is so difficult to live there. Those who have loved, they know how difficult it is to be constantly in love. How to remain loving forever? One has to come back again and again from this peak of love. Love is Shiva's abode. He lives there. And for that matter, love is the abode, the resting place of each awakened one. Indeed, love is the home of the one who has transcended. And lovingness is the way of such a person. Only such a person lives in love. That is his abode. When I say that is his abode, I mean now he is not even aware of love. Because if you live constantly on such a peak, you will not be aware that this is a peak. The peak becomes a plane for such a person. The awakened one is not aware of love. We are aware of love because we live in a state of non-love. And because of the contrast, we feel love. The awakened one is love. The state of Bhairav means that one has become love, not loving. One has become love, he lives on this peak. The peak has become his permanent abode. How to make this highest peak possible? Beyond duality, beyond unconsciousness, beyond consciousness, beyond body and beyond soul beyond the world and beyond your so-called liberation. How to reach this peak? The subject matter of life, love and light revolves around this basic question, how to reach this peak? Why such question has been asked by Nivedita? These questions were asked by her as a seeker for her own transformation. The response to various questions assume the book form later realizing the importance of this communion for others. You can also ask such questions, but it will not carry the same meaning. So try to understand why Nivedita asks such questions or Devi asks such questions in Vigyan Bhairav Tantra, what is your reality? Devi is in deep love. When you are in deep love, for the first time you encounter the inner reality. 
this inner reality the essence of lovingness flows towards shiva as a result shiva is formless for devi such was the inner state of the author during the entire communion and the same state continues as life and living now for her the master is formless remember when you are in love the body of the beloved disappears the form is no more and the formless is revealed you are facing an abyss that is why we are so afraid of love and we consider sex alone as love and try to evade love in every possible manner we can face a body we can face a face we can face a form but we are in every possible way afraid of facing an abyss if you love someone and if you really love the body is bound to disappear in some moments of climax of peak the form will disappear and through the beloved you will enter the formless glimpses of such a state one experiences glimpses of such a state unconsciously experiences in the moments of sex that is why we are afraid it is falling into a bottomless abyss so this question is not just a single simple curiosity o oh shiva what is your reality only such an understanding initiates the process of transformation the author as a seeker must have fallen in love with the form things start that way she must have loved this man as a man and now when love has come of age when the love has blossomed this man has disappeared he has become formless now he is to be found nowhere is such a state is the expression through devi's question o oh shiva what is your reality devi asks the question devi asks this question it is a question asked in a very intimate love moment and when such questions are raised they become different according to the mind in which they are asked this creates the situation the milieu of a question in your mind devi must be at a loss shiva as a form has disappeared when love reaches its peak the lover disappears why this happens this happens because really everyone is formless you are not a body you move as a body you live as a body but you are not the body when we see someone from outside he is a body and when love penetrates within then we are not seeing the person from the outside love sees a person as a person can see himself from within then the form disappears in such formless form alone love bridges life and light as two shows in such formless form alone love bridges life and light as two shows hence this title life love and light enough for now